And the shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Welcome to Pilgrim's YouTube site for this weekend in mid-August. It's great to have you with us. And in Pilgrim Lutheran Brethren time, it is back to school week. Well, next week as well. And for our kids down, our grandkids down in Columbus, it was actually today. It's an exciting time. It's also a sad time. And it's a time when the kids and teens of the church come running up to us asking, can we go out on the boat and go tubing one more time before summer's over? Well, summer's not even close to being over, but just things change. And next thing you know, it'll be football season and, and all the other seasons and the kids will be busy and well, you know how it is. It's also the weekend for the Stantons to visit us. The Stantons are missionaries or missionary servants in Chad, Africa. They run the Welcome Center there. And I'm thinking about shepherds, and I think their position has to be a lot like shepherding, caring for people as they come through and as they work in the mission field and caring for our missionaries, arranging for them, helping them with financial issues and so forth, coming into the country of Chad. And God bless them in their ministry, and we're really looking forward to seeing them this weekend. It's also, and I think this is really a great time for us, it's a communion Sunday for, for us here at Pilgrim. If you're in town, we really encourage you to come out for communion. We celebrate the gift of God to us, the body and blood of Jesus Christ given in the sacrament, the bread and the wine. What an amazing gift and God's amazing sacrament, a means of grace, a visible means of God's invisible grace. It's also campfire season. It's actually major outdoor campfire season, and Jan and I end up having so many campfires, and so she decided to place me right in front of one of her special luring campfires for tonight. And we're looking at a great passage that highlights the work of Jesus Christ as the great shepherd, or in this passage, the good shepherd. And this is John 10, 11 through 18. Follow along if you'd like. It's the fourth gospel. John, uh, is recording the story of Jesus and Jesus talks quite a bit about being a shepherd and he calls pastors to be shepherds he calls other people to be shepherds but in the time of Jesus in the Near East the shepherd was known as primary caregiver a royal caregiver for the people of God ancient Near Eastern thought the shepherd was a royal caregiver of God's people God himself the shepherd of Israel Remember, the Lord is my shepherd, and actually we'll quote Psalm 23 in a little bit, highlighting that. The shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. We're, we're going to read verses 11 through 18. It's actually a whole chapter long, but for, to, for today, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. And now Jesus says this about himself. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them as well. They too will listen to my voice and there will be one flock the reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I receive from my father. Join in prayer. Father, we thank you for your incredible word, the power of your word, the, the precision and accuracy of your word and the way it speaks to our hearts. and. Uh, the thought of a good shepherd, sometimes we're like, we're not so sure what that means. And then, you know, as, as your word teaches us, as it trains us, we understand the power of this thought that the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, the sacrificial lamb. 
and ties us back to thousands of years of thought and practice. Thank you for the Messiah, the true shepherd, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. And what a great gift to us. Father, I pray that you uh, minister to our hearts, convict us of sin and righteousness and judgment. Help us to rightly divide the law and the gospel. May the law show us our sinfulness and our need for Christ and then be reminded of and led to the gospel and the great news of Jesus and all he has done for us. God's riches at Christ's expense, the gospel, the proclamation of Christ and his work. And then we bring our concerns before you. Touch us, work in our lives, give us health and care for us, we pray. But I pray that also we would recognize how fragile life is and we pray, we pray for those who are dealing with difficult times. Minister to each one, we pray, in the name of Christ. And now open your word to us, we pray. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts which embrace the truth of your word. Amen. So I learned one more lesson at the fair. By the way, I learned a lot at the Lake County Fair, and I included some of that a couple of, uh, a couple of weekends ago on the YouTube site. And... You know, I was thinking about that and how much we learn when we go to a fair and we see the animals and the folks are working with the animals and all of that. And this is actually a lesson that I, or actually something that I learned years ago at a different fair up in Swift Current, Saskatchewan, Canada. And I had the joy of going up there with my Uncle Jack and my Uncle Johnny and Aunt Marie and the others, uh, uncles and aunts and family, and we'd go up to the fair and it was just such a great time. And especially we loved the you know, of course, the bare, bareback horse riding, bucking broncos, and then the bulls, the bull riding, just amazing. And so those were our favorites, and we, we always wanted to be horse riders, bull riders. But one of the most amazing things I ever saw at the fair was the demonstration of a sheepdog. And I never realized just how effective and significant a, a sheepdog could be. And here comes into the fairgrounds a sheepdog with a whole bunch of sheep in front of it, and it's just running from side to side to side, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and just directing the sheep, nipping at their the back of their legs, pushing them into the right position. An amazing, amazing demonstration of the sheepdog and how effective it is. Which reminds me today of the impact of a good shepherd. A good shepherd guides, directs his sheep, they follow him, they hear his voice, they know his voice, and he cares for them, and would be willing to do a lot to save them and keep them safe. Probably doesn't think so much in terms of laying down his life for them, but would accept the consequences of caring for the sheep. A false shepherd doesn't so much, and there's, a, there's this great illustration between a, a good shepherd and a casual shepherd. And the good shepherd really takes his work seriously, conscientiously, whereas the casual sh shepherd doesn't care so much. And the thief and the robber doesn't care at all. He's out to get what he thinks he has coming. Whereas the good shepherd says, I've been entrusted with the care of these sheep and I would even lay down my life for them, the good shepherd. And especially Jesus is pointing to his own ministry as the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world and, he's, and he will take away the sin of the world uh, through the greatness of his work on Calvary dying for our sins, his great work on the cross. The Good Shepherd, verses 11 through 14. The Good Shepherd, verses 11 through 14. And we're still in John chapter 10, in verses 11 through 14. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just that great and powerful statement of who the shepherd is. And I think, like I said, the Stantons would be shepherds. Your pastors are shepherds and those who care for us and especially Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the great shepherd, the shepherd of the sheep. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And just a reminder, and I love this passage because it's King David going back to his life as a shepherd 
And King David was a very unusual king because he was selected not from the line of the kings. Well, it would have been the line of one king. Not from the line of the kings, but he selected, handpicked by God to take in, step in and to take King Saul's place. And he's the son of Jesse. And he's a shepherd boy. And he remembers his life as a shepherd boy. He kind of never forgot where he came from. And as he writes this incredible song, he's reminded of God's greatness. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And it's such a neat picture because David is talking about the life of a shepherd and some of the things that a shepherd does and a sheep experiences and he ties every one of those to a spiritual connection, a spiritual analogy. And the word comes alive to those who understand sheep at all. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He is the good shepherd. And then the great news is that the shepherd knows his sheep. And we're loving this because we just had to run in and scold our dogs. Well, we had to scold the dog, Lily, who were dog sitting for a few days. And as a sister to one of our dogs, lover and she knows our voice well she knows our voice pretty well but she doesn't know our voice as well as she knows ernie and michelle's voices and they're her master they're her owner but she does know our voices and she listens to us but our dogs know our voices and so they listen to us in a very very specific way the shepherd knows the sheep they hear his voice they know his voice he loves his sheep we love our dogs and they hear our voice. They know our voice. The shepherd knows his sheep. John 10, 14 through 16. I'm the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. And so you have this great picture that when the time comes, when the time comes, the shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Contrast between the casual shepherd and the good shepherd. The good shepherd takes this seriously. And Jesus knows he will lay down his life for his people so that sin will be forgiven, so that it will be given grace, forgiveness, and opportunity. The shepherd knows his sheep, and he lays down. He's willing to lay down his life for the sheep. And then he says this, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, that relationship between Jesus and his Father, and then I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. And that's pretty interesting. It's really kind of quick and hard to catch, but this is really talking about the worldwide scope of the church. The church is worldwide, and Jesus is saying, I have other sheep that aren't just right around us here, but I, I, I'm going to be the, the head of a church that's going to be worldwide. And we see that today. Millions and millions of believers, billions of believers, and as we gather for communion and we claim that we're one in Christ, we are one of this great body of believers in Christ that stretches from country to country, from shore to shore, right? Of believers in Jesus Christ. I have other sheep that are not of the sheep and I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. And we celebrate that in communion. We celebrate that in our knowledge of the truth and in the preaching and teaching of Scripture. One flock, one shepherd. We have many different takes on parts of Scripture, but ultimately we're drawn together by one primary truth, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Then, the shepherd's authority. And this is really a fascinating passage. Jesus will will willingly go to the cross under his authority which god the father has given to him and he'll willingly voluntarily go to the cross by the authority of the father which the father has given to him and he goes to the cross voluntarily no one puts him on the cross no one or decides to put him on the cross except for ultimately he agrees to it not not easily what does he say not my will but your will be done listen 
The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I receive from my father. Go to John 17, <clears throat> 2, if you'd like to look, look up John 17, 2. And this is about glorifying the Son, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. For you granted the Son authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Spectacular verse, verses. For you granted Jesus authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. And then one more passage about authority, and I think you know this well, it's from the Great Commission. Jesus says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth, or under the earth, in heaven and on earth. Jesus is saying, all authority is given to me. Now go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. Lo, I am with you always to the very end of the age. All authority is given to Jesus, he says. All authority is given to me. And then related to the cross, related to his death, and then the promise of his resurrection. And I willingly give up my life, voluntarily give up my life. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And this teaching of the shepherd and Jesus as shepherd. It's just, it just comes together as we consider Jesus as the Lamb of God. So Jesus is our great shepherd. <clears throat> he is also the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And so we tie back to the shepherd of the Old Testament, the Lord is my shepherd, and then the great teachings of the Old Testament, the practices of the Old Testament of a sacrificial lamb. And Jesus becomes the great once and for all sacrifice. The once and for all sacrificial lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And so John, when he sees Jesus coming to him for baptism, says, behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. What a great savior. What a great savior. We worship him, we proclaim him. And by faith, we believe in him. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above you. Heavenly host, Prince Father, Son.